What I want to do today is talk to you about three-point estimating. It's a, it's a better approach to estimating than when folks do a one-point estimation. Oh, what do I mean by one-point and three-point? Well, whenever you're going to assign uh, someone to estimate a project, normally you're going to ask them to start by giving you a work breakdown structure or a task list, right? And that's going to be the list of things that someone has to do to get the project done. The first place where people make mistakes on estimates is that they don't keep everything in the list that they should, right? They only put the things that that person thinks about in the list, right? So if you're a software developer, you put all the tasks related to development, but maybe you don't put any tasks related to migrating content or to uh, quality assurance or other things. So that's the first classic mistake people make with an estimate. They leave things off, right? And that's a bummer. You don't want to do that because you're going to end up still having to do that work. You're just not going to make any money off it. In fact, you're going to lose money because you didn't quote anything to do that work. But the second place where people make mistakes in an estimate is related to what's called one point or three point estimation. When you do a one point estimation, you basically take that task and you put one number there at the end. This will take this long. Now, if this is the task you've done a hundred times over and you know that, nah, there's a good chance there's not a problem. But as we all know, every project has nuances and every customer has their own particular take on things. And even if you've done something a hundred times, it doesn't mean the customer wants it done the way you've always done it. So a more effective way to estimate something is to do a three point estimation. And that means that for every task, you're going to create three different estimates for that task. So let's take a look at it, right? Let's say that we were going to quote ourselves here, a project to build a, a membership site, right? So we say, all right, we're going to build a membership site. And the first thing we want to do is create our list of tasks. And so we'll start and say, okay, the, you know, the first task here is going to be to evaluate uh, and select a, a plugin that we're going to use, right? And then after we do that, Right, we're going to be in the in the case where um, we're going to we're going to also then have to decide um, we're going to have to configure the plugin um, for the particular needs that you want. Right, um, and I I want to take these and make them left aligned to make them easier to read. Uh, okay, so first we evaluate, pick the plugin, then we're going to configure the plugin. We're going to likely have to add. Um, some customized code, right, to be able to connect uh, roles with capabilities, right? Even if even if we're using a plugin to do some of this stuff, we're going to probably need a little bit of customized code in there. Um, and then we're going to have to work through everything related to, let's say, the uh, the payment gateway work, right? And that's just in order to get paid, right? So config, uh, and and let's say that at this point. Um, that was all we were doing. We're not creating custom post types. We're not doing anything fancier than that. This is a baseline uh, of work we have to do. You go, okay, no problem. Here's what I got to do. So once we have defined the set of tasks, right, at this point, what we want to do is then select our three points. And what we do for our three point estimation is we first talk about what is the expected amount, right? What do we expect? This is when you've done something a hundred times over and over. So you have a pretty good reason, right, to think so. But you're also going to have what's the best case, right? What's the best case? What's the, you know, what's the what's the one that you're you're hoping will play it out? Now these these don't always have to be the same, right? You could say, well, I've done it a million times and it always takes this much. But boy, if everything lined up and if they said yes to all these different dynamics, it'd be even faster. Right? And then what's the worst case? Right? Now, here the worst case is the person says, I don't want it to work like that at all. Right? So let's say that you're picking a membership plugin and you're saying, okay, we're going to, you know, my, my supposition is we're going to have a, a, a payment gateway we're going to pick. Right? Well, what's the worst case? Well, the worst case is, right? And here you can even write notes. Right? So here's our uh, notes for worst case. Right. And and when you're writing these notes for the worst case, right, you can you can even say, right, oh, they want on the payment gateway, they want uh, multiple uh, gateways configured. Right. And and you go, OK, that's for some reason I have all these. Uh, you're like, that's not fun. That's not fun at all, because the reality is if I have to create 
if the code base comes with an expectation, if the plugin comes with an expectation of a single gateway, and now I have to support multiple gateways, right? Then I have to do this extra work, right? Well, that's that's not easy, right? So the worst case scenario, you, oh, you can you can start seeing where this number is going to be really different, right? So you might say, okay, if I want to select a plugin, well, look, I've selected this over and over. We have a couple calls. Um, we talk it through. We you know. Uh, we're going to find new things. It's going to be several calls. We're going to find nuances in here. So yeah, you know what? On average, I'm going to think it's going to be about six hours of phone calls, of talking, of walking it through to pick it. But the truth is, if they showed up, if they watched this so the video, did, you know, read this right up, in the best case scenario, man, I could pick it in two hours, right? They could just come in and, and, and be good to go. What's the worst case scenario? Right. Well, you know the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is where you go to pick one and then you start, you know, fine tuning and looking at it, and then they come back and they give you a new requirement, which means you have to scrap all that and start again. You start trying to figure out that piece, and then they give you a new requirement. You scrap that. Oh boy, right. And then finally, you decide I'm going to have to custom code the whole plugin myself. Right. I'm going to have to write all the code myself because this is nuanced and complicated and doesn't. There is no plugin that supports what they want. Well, if you're doing that, you know that this number is going to be really big right? Not even just a week or two of development. It could be three or four weeks of development. All of a sudden, you're like, wow, this is big, right? Notice what happens, right? Best case, expected case, and worst case are nowhere near each other, right? The same thing happens here. We say, okay, look, if, I, if I'm configuring it and I've configured these over and over and over again, not a problem. On average, yeah, not bad, right? Best case, they only want to protect, you know, uh, categories of posts. Easy to do, not a problem at all. Again, I'd be done quick. Worst case, right? Well, the worst case is now not, notice, we don't do a dependency here of I take this worst case and I configure to this worst case. Because in this case, the worst case where I create a custom plugin has virtually no configuration. But this is a brand new worst case, right? And this worst case is, what happens if they pick an existing plugin and then I have to go spend all day and night configuring everything under the sun for it? Yeah, could be a huge mess, right? Same thing we do with custom codes, same thing we do with payment gateway. So you can see how this plays out and you can see why there's such a huge variance here because we're doing different things. Now, this is where we get interesting when we say, okay, let's now talk about, we're gonna insert a new column here and say, what, what is actually our actual estimate, right? So our three, sorry, three point estimate. This is, this is the column we're gonna use, right? This is the column that we're gonna pay attention to. All, you know, all the rest of it is just gonna be a formula, right? And what we wanna do here is we wanna say, okay, we're gonna take, sorry, we're gonna take our expected, right? times four plus our best case and our worst case. And then we're gonna divide it by six. Now notice what happens, right? And this is where most people get three point estimations wrong, right? What you'll notice is that if this, if this is our estimate, right? And we're gonna get rid of some of these Hold on here. Do it like that. If if we if we look at this and we go, oh, two and six, wait a minute, this number is way bigger because it's taking into account our worst cases right? This is what normal people do when they do a three-point exercise. They don't have expected best case and worst case. They have, uh, if it's really easy, if it's, you know, normal, and if it's, you know, a bit harder. And what do they do? They go, oh, well, yeah, if it's really easy, four, and if it's normal, six, and if it's harder, eight. And then they take this and they go, Let's take the sum of this, divide it by three, right? Of course, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get that middle number and you're gonna get a number that looks really different than this number up here, right? Really different. And so what's gonna happen? 
is that if you roll out with a three-point estimate where you are playing the game of easy, normal, and harder versus the expected, the best case, and the worst case, right, your numbers are going to look really different at the end. This is why it's important to learn how to estimate well, right? Now, of course, the greater level of detail that you have before you ever start an estimating exercise, the better off you're going to be, right? The greater amount of detail you have. But most of the time, we don't have any details. Most of the time, we literally have a lack of nuance, a lack of detail, and someone still asks for an estimate. And when they do, I don't mind giving people an estimate. It just means that I'm going to use my particular expertise and my background to come up with what's the expected case, what's the best case, and what's the worst case. And when someone comes to me and goes, there's no way that could be 24 hours, and someone else wants to second guess me, what's going to happen is in that moment, now there's going to be some clients, I'll tell you right off the bat, there's going to be some clients who will look at someone else's you know, quote compared to mine, and they're going to say, well, this person gave it to me a lot better deal, so you clearly don't know what you're doing. At which point... I can let them go, or I can at least highlight why I think mine is right. And as I start talking, they will quickly discover that actually the reality is the reason theirs was lower was because they didn't have my experience. The reason theirs was lower was because they didn't understand the nuances of what was possible. And as I start talking about what could happen and what we have to navigate through, all of a sudden they realize, wow, you actually know what you're talking about, and this number is not too far off field okay, let's, let's keep talking, right? So your estimate is also a way to differentiate and to highlight your experience and expertise. Ultimately, this is how I do a three-point estimate. Thanks.